Camp Easter. Uh, we are from Christ Life Spring Fellowship, London, Ontario, Canada, the church with the revelation of Christ that brings your restoration. Pastor, Pastor David Jawa here. And our contact is David Jawa here at Rogers.com. Our service is Saturday evening worship service at 7 p.m. on Facebook, prayer meeting Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. on Zoom, and Bible study Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Facebook. The power of the blood of Jesus Christ. There is nothing in the universe as potent powerful or personal as the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The blood is consequently the link between physical matter and spirit, their life in the blood. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm reading from Leviticus chapter 17 from verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Ephesians 1 7, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. 1 John 1 7 But if we walk in the light as he is in, in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you and we praise you and we pray, God, that you bless your word and strengthen us and speak to our hearts through your word and through your soul. Yes. And let the anointing flow. Let your Holy Spirit take full control, lead and direct now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I just, I'm going to turn you over to my husband, Pastor David Joe here. Okay, praise the Lord. The place is a little narrow here, but thank God for what we have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. The Spirit of God is moving in this place. The Spirit of God is moving within you. And the Bible says, wherever the Spirit is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. I want you to know, if you are a believer, you have liberty because the spirit of god is within you and today if you have not believed you can believe you can believe today and jesus will come within you and bring with him the holy spirit to live within you so that you would have liberty. Hallelujah. Any man in Christ Jesus is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. I want you know, to know that Jesus said, Whom serve the Son set free is free indeed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are set free by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of Jesus Christ. 
you are set free. And today, as the Spirit of God leads, we want to talk about the power of the blood. The power of the blood. Hallelujah. There is nothing in the universe as potent, powerful, or personal as the precious blood of the Lamb. I want you to know that if you are in danger tonight, the blood has got the power to deliver you. Hallelujah. If you are in sickness tonight, the blood of Jesus can deliver you. All you need to do is to call upon that name and say, Jesus, yes, let your blood flow over me now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus has eternal values and infinite virtue. The blood is eternal. While we, when we die, the way the doctor would tell you that you die is that there is no blood flowing through your veins. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus, I want to say here, is sinless, is incorruptible. The blood of man has become sinful and corrupt. And therefore bring condemnation to him. The Bible testimony of the blood of Jesus is clear. And it leaves no doubt. I can tell you with a surety that the blood of Jesus Christ has washed me. The blood of Jesus Christ has preserved me. The blood of Jesus Christ has kept me. The blood of Jesus Christ is flowing through me. And that blood has delivered me from all satanic powers. Hallelujah. The blood is indeed a strange and mysterious substance. Hallelujah. The blood flowing through your body is strange and mysterious because the scriptures, the scripture, the Bible, the word of God attests that life lies within the blood. Once again, I say, you know a man is alive if he has blood flowing through him. If you cut him and you find no blood, he has to be a dead man. Hallelujah. But as long blood is flowing through a person, he's alive. The Bible says in the Leviticus 17.11 For the life of the flesh, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Hallelujah. So there goes it. I have proved the doctor, the medical reports that life is in the blood. And God has given it unto us upon the altar for 
to make atonement for our soul. So the blood of Jesus is given to us to make a covering to our soul that is sinful, that does not know God, and has forgotten God. But when the blood of Jesus flows within us, it brings life and brings memory and brings us into that appointment with God that he wants to give us life. And today, if you want life and life eternally, I say, call upon the name of Jesus and say, Lord, let your blood, let your blood flow through me. For it is the blood that makes atonement for your soul. The blood forms a covering and delivers you and cleans you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus is consequently the link between the physical matter and the spirit. Hallelujah. The blood is the link that you have with God. The blood is the link that supports life within you. And if you would allow today the blood to flow through you, you will be surprised of what you can become. Now, how our souls interact with this substance is unclear. But we do know when God breathed upon Adam, he became a living soul. So when he breathed upon man, blood begins to flow because blood is the life within man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the breath of God, the Spirit of God, as he enters into man, he brings life. Hallelujah. So our unborn child, a child that is within the womb, has blood. Has what? Blood. And that blood is the Father's blood. And that blood tells you that that child is a living soul. Is a living soul. Therefore, abortion is wrong. A man, a woman that commits abortion sins against his soul. Because the blood within the child is alive. Hallelujah. And if you shed blood, God require, require, requires it touch your hand. Your blood will also be shed. In Genesis 2 7, and the Lord God for man of the dust of the ground and breathe the breath of life 
and man became a living soul. The substance that is physical does earth from the ground. He make the body of man. But when God breathed into his nostril, there came life. What is life? Blood. Blood. When God breathed within you, when you was in your mother's womb, hallelujah, and God formed life within you. You were alive in the womb. You did not become alive when you were delivered from your mother's womb, but you were alive. You were alive. You were alive in the womb. So those People who terminate a pregnancy is guilty of murder. Hallelujah. The living component of our soul resides mostly, mostly in the blood. Hallelujah. The English physician William Harvey who was the first to discover the circulation of blood said of it. He said the blood is the first to live. The first thing to live within a human being is the blood. And the last to die. It reminds me. As I was preparing this message. Some years ago. We stood around. My father-in-law. And he breathed his last breath. And I saw a tear came in his eyes and water were there, but he was gone. It was that moment, it was that moment, the blood stopped flowing in him. It was that moment he died. And so let me tell you something. The first thing to live within you in your mother's womb is your blood. And the last thing to die is your blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is a physician that discovers that. Hallelujah. Those who are washed by the blood of Jesus are sons of God. And those who are not washed by the blood of the Lamb or the blood of Jesus, they are sons or daughters of the devil. And that is according to the scriptures. It takes the living blood, the lively blood of Jesus Christ to wash your soul, to wash you and make you whole. You have to be willing to accept what he has given to you, the blood to deliver you from your sins. And the moment you say, Lord, wash me with your blood, 
that blood, that component has brought life within you. Life within you. So you become a child of God. You become alive to God. When you accept Christ as your Savior, you become alive to God. Before you were dead in your trespasses and sin, but when you said, Lord, come into me, wash me with your blood, you become alive. At that moment, at that moment, you are born again. You are born again because you are washed with the blood of Jesus and the life of God has entered you. Hallelujah. All because of the blood. Hallelujah. By far and away, the most precious blood of all is the blood of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, there is a lot of religions, but no religion, no religion has a blood, the blood that gives life, that gives the life of God, that makes us whole again, that can wash away our sin, but only the blood of the Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Only the blood. On the, this Easter season, we would like to preach and teach we would like to tell the world and tell the world all over. Look, look to Jesus Christ. He has come as your Savior. How he can become your Savior? Because of the blood that he shed for you on Calvary. There are about seven, seven times that he shed his blood at Calvary. Maybe I talk about that next week. Seven times Jesus shed his blood for us. Hallelujah. But today, as we look into the message, of the blood of Jesus. I want to say the bloodline of Christ, the bloodline of Christ runs like a scarlet thread from Genesis to Revelation, revealing God's plan of redemption. When man sinned, there was revealed according to the scriptures that by the seed of the woman he will conquer the devil and sin. And how he will do that? He will be slain by the devil. But his blood his blood will wash our sins away. He would be slain as a sacrifice to the, and die for our sins. So tonight, I want to speak to you a little more about the blood. There, are, there is a fourfold purpose of the blood of Jesus Christ. You will find maybe more if you look in the scriptures. But today I want to speak about the fourfold purpose of the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus Christ and you mister, you sir, 
You boy, you girl, you need to know why the blood is important for you. Hallelujah. One, redemption. Two, cleanse or sanctification. Three, justification. Four, reconciliation. The blood has a four full purpose by God, given by God to redeem us, to cleanse us, to justify us, and to reconcile us. Today, you need redemption. Today, you need sanctification. Today, you need to be justified. Today, you need to be reconciled to God all over again. Hallelujah. First, the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ is the defining moment in history. And it will reside in the conscience of the redeemed for all eternity. The blood was what the Old Testament people wait on. And they believed God and they worshiped God through the bloods of animals as a sacrifice, as a substitute to the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of the animal was a type of the real thing to come. And so 4,000 years after man was created, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world and to die and to shed his blood. Hallelujah. At that time, it becomes a defining moment in history when the blood of Jesus was shed at Calvary. The powers of Satan were crippled. The powers of sickness were crippled. The powers of evil were crippled. When the blood, when the blood of Jesus was shed. Hallelujah. At that moment, the Old Testament saints who believe in God went to paradise beneath. But when he died through the precious blood, Jesus set them free from beneath and lift paradise up above so that paradise is no more beneath but above. So when a believer die, when you die and you are washed with the blood of Jesus Christ, you go into paradise that is above, not beneath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians 1.7, in whom we have redemption. Say that word. Redemption. Through his blood. The forgiveness of sin. According to the riches of his grace. So the blood of Jesus Christ. Redeem us unto God. The blood of Jesus Christ bring us back to God. What is redemption? Redemption is a price that is paid for our sins. Redemption 
is the ransom that God have and paid for your sins. You were a slave in the hands of the devil. You were a slave to sin. But when Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price for you and for me. Hallelujah. And by us, by us accepting him as Lord, as Savior, as God. He comes within us. He washes us. He cleanses us. He redeems us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has bring redemption to you. Deliverance to you. He has delivered you from all sort of evil. Internal and external. Hallelujah. You have problems going on within you. And you need deliverance. You have problems going on around you. And you need deliverance. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus takes care of not only your internal problems, but your external problems. Hallelujah. I share a couple weeks ago about my daughter being attacked by the power of Satan. But when I plead the blood, that devil had to leave. That devil had to exit. That devil had to go his way because there's power in the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Peter 1, 17 to 19. Knowing that we were not redeemed with corruptible things, such as silver or gold. You know, there are many people believe that the riches, that the wealth can get them to heaven and can buy the way to heaven. So they give a lot of money, a lot of offering. But let me say today, you could give money or give offering, but if the blood of Jesus Christ has not washed you, you will not go to heaven. Many of us has bring many things like Cain. We brought our fruits, our vegetables, and offer it to God. Now those things cannot redeem you. Cannot redeem a man. Only the blood of Jesus can redeem you. Hallelujah. The Bible says we are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So why the blood of Jesus could redeem us because the blood of Jesus is without sin, without blemish, without any spot or wrinkled. Hallelujah. The blood redeem us. Two. In first John one seven. But we walk in the light. How we walk in the light. As he is in the light. We have fellowship one another. Through the light. And the blood of Jesus his son. Cleanses from all sins. Look at that. The blood of Jesus his son, the blood of Jesus, the God's son, cleanses from all, not a few, not a few, not one, not two, but all sins. Hallelujah. 
I want you to know the blood cleanse. There's a next word for cleanse. And I would use a word called sanctification. Or the blood of Jesus sanctifies. He cleanses from physical stain. He cleanses like he cleanses a leper. He cures us of all disease. The blood of Jesus cleans, cleans of body, soul, and spirit. Or should I say we are sanctified spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. The blood flows and becomes a cleansing detergent unto us. A cleansing a cleansing dust and removes every stain, remove every sin, remove every immoral problem that we have, every any defilement that we have. The blood makes us pure. We become pure in the sight of God and we can approach God boldly because we are cleansed by the blood, hallelujah. And Christians, you know, many times you sin. Many times we come short of the glory of God. And we need to consecrate ourselves all over again. How do we cleanse ourselves and re consecrate ourselves unto God? It is true, the blood of Jesus, we are consecrated. We are dedicated. We are committed unto God. Hallelujah. Thirdly, in Romans 5, 9, it say much more than, Be now justified by the blood, or by his blood, or by the blood of Jesus Christ. Much more than being justified by the blood we have, we shall be saved from the wrath that is to come. We shall be saved from wrath through the blood of Jesus. How is it? The blood justify you. The blood justify you by making you a righteous person. It renders you righteous. The unholy thing that you were is now purged by the blood of the Lamb. And the blood has an atonement uh, for you and covers you and wash you and present you unto God, justify or righteous before God. So you are now clothed with the righteousness of God. You now live not in your own righteousness, not by your good works, not the good things that you have done, not the religious things that you have done, but you are now justified by the blood of God before God. You have a covering. You have an atonement through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And lastly, the Bible says in Colossians 1.20 And through him, through him, that's through Jesus, to reconcile to himself, whether on earth or in heaven, 
making peace by the blood of his cross. So in Colossians 1.20, we are reconciled unto God by the blood of Jesus, the blood that was shed on Calvary. We are brought back to God. We were astray. Every man gone his own way. The Bible said we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God through the blood of Jesus Christ has reconciled us to him so that now in Christ we can develop a relationship and become at peace with God which before when we were sinners we were not at peace with God but the blood of Jesus Christ reconciled us when we say Lord deliver me from my sin reconcile me and the Lord immediately reconcile you this is what we call a restoration he restored you into a relationship of peace which was there before you enter your mom but now through the blood of Jesus Christ we are redeemed from our sins. The Bible says all have sinned. All, everybody, every man has sinned before God. And we all need to be reconciled. So the blood of Jesus is what reconciles you back to God. In closing, I must say to you that your redemption is only through the blood of Jesus Christ. You coming to God is only through the blood. The price has been paid for you and Jesus has ransomed you. You have to believe in him and call upon him. Two, you are sanctified by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus washes you from all sins. Three, you are now justified. When you call upon him, you are justified by the blood of the Lamb. You are made righteous. And lastly, you now have a relationship with God. Before, you never had a relationship. You couldn't call upon him. Now you can come before him boldly and speak to him as a friend. So you are redeemed, sanctified, justified, and reconciled by the blood. Let's pray. Glory to God. Father, let your precious blood flow into this moment of the service. And I call upon you. If you never call upon the name of Jesus, do so tonight. If you don't know where you are and how to be saved, call upon the name of Jesus and say, let your blood, Lord, let your blood that you shed at Calvary now flow through my spirit, soul and body and wash 
and make me clean. Sanctify me, justify me, make me righteous and make me a person that can come before you as a friend. Reconcile me. So tonight, you need Jesus. And there's, I'm speaking to somebody. You have gone astray. You have gone astray. I said, turn back. Repent. And come to Jesus Christ. Call upon the name of Jesus and say, Lord, let your blood now wash me and make me whole. And you believers and people that are having problems in your life, demonic spirits troubling you, attacking you, and creating havoc in your life. You are being threatened by various habits, demonic spirit that rule within your body and bring you down. I say, call upon Jesus and plead the blood over your life. And so right now, I pray for you. First, I pray for that person that wants you as Lord and Savior. Come into his life. Wash him, cleanse him as he call upon you. Forgive him of all his sins and deliver him. Set him free, set him free, set her free, set her free. I pray for those who are oppressed. Those who have turned back and plead the blood upon your life and say, come back to Jesus. Jesus has his arms wide open to you, for you. Why don't you enter into his arms? Oh, praise the Lord. As you come to him, draw to him. Draw nearer, nearer, nearer to that cross. And that cross will set you free. And now pray for the persons, the people that are attacked by demonic spirits, spirits of religion, spirits of the occult. I bind you! Spirits of the God, I bind the spirits of heaviness. I take authority over the powers of sin, the powers of oppression, the powers of depression through the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I speak deliverance to all those who need a deliverance, to all those that call upon the name, to all those who invite you into their life, and your blood is flown through them. I bless them and praise you for them in Jesus' name. Now God bless you, Record. I see you on Wednesday from our Bible study on Daniel. I want you to know that at 7, 7 o'clock on Tuesday, we also have prayer meeting. You could get down to me, go on my website, and you will find a link and get into prayer. God bless you. This is your pastor, David Joe here.